Today, we are talking all about speed ramps and holds in Final Cut Pro. And when I say speed ramping and holds, I mean changing the frame rate essentially in the shot or pausing the shot at any point. Now, first we're gonna start with speed ramping, how to set it up and how to manipulate it and how to get the look that you're going for. And if at any point you wanna check if there have been any speed adjustments done to a clip, you can press the keyboard shortcut of Command R, which will bring up the Retime Editor. Or another way is to press on this icon right here, which will bring up the speed options for any clip that has been selected. So if you press on that and you can go down to show Retime Editor, again, the shortcuts are all here. And we're gonna be going through a lot of these, so buckle in. So right off the bat, one of the ways that I start with retiming a clip is I go and I look for the section that I want to retime. And I just use, I press R or I select the range tool. And I just select where I want it to begin and where I want it to end. And this selection allows me to go to the retime options menu and select if I want to slow it down or speed it up. So in this case, I'm just going to speed it up 20 times and it does 90% of everything that I want for it. And you play it back, it does your speed ramp and you're done. So that's one of the fastest way I found to do a speed ramp where you do your, your range selection to where you want it to begin to where you want it to end. And you go to the retime options menu and then you select what you want it to do, slow it down, speed it up. I'll do 20 times and then it's done. And you can adjust these points. So you can actually slow it down if you feel it's too fast. Let's just watch it back. Whips around her, boom, there's your speed ramp. And you can, these gray areas right here, these gray areas right here, allow you to adjust the speed at which it transitions into the speed ramp and transitions out of the speed ramp. So it'll transition faster, both in and out. Or if you want it to be slower, you can just choose those and have it ramp up a little bit. You can have it ramp up slower and then ease out of the speed ramp. Not to make it as jarring, but you have to play with that. That depends on the footage that you have. And speed ramps work great for footage with a lot of motion in it. So at any point, if you don't like it and you just want to restart over, you can just press shift N and it will set the entire clip that you have back to normal. So once again, you can just select a clip if you want and go to normal speed and you have shift N. And there is also a reset speed function, but they essentially do the same. Normal just brings it back to 100%. And I typically do shift N and it brings all that back. So another way that you can do it where you can be a little bit more precise if you don't want to use the range tool is you select your clip and you want the speed ramp to start from here. You can push shift B, which makes an edit, but doesn't change any of the speed. It just gives you a visual reference of where that change will happen. And then you can go to the end and press it again, shift B. And now you have two edits, but no change has happened. So now you can visually see where it's going to happen. And again, all this is in here. So this is just the speed blade tool. We're just making a cut for where you want to control that speed change. And once you have these, you can go in and you can start adjusting these to be exactly the length you want. And just know the far right marker will control everything that's left of it. If I push on this one here, it's gonna change everything to the left of it. So I'm actually speeding up the shot in front of it. So now we have a faster shot off the top and then it transitions, it's a short transition into the next one. And if you wanna choose a custom speed, you just click the down arrow and type in the speed that you want. And you can actually have everything ripple together. And if you turn this off, and say you, you said it's a 2000, which is 20 times, it won't ripple everything else down the timeline. And that's a good way to ensure that the rest of your edit remains the same, just the clip that you're working on is the one that gets affected. So I'm just gonna undo that, undo that. I'm just gonna press Shift N to bring us back to 100% normal speed. So I'm just gonna make my edits again, here and then out there. 
And the reason I don't like this method is because you have to keep dragging it to find what you want. So alternatively, once you create your speed blade, then you can just go here and choose the speed that you want. So let's do 20 times again. And it'll do the same function as before with the range tool where you select it and then just tell it what to do. So that's actually more steps than before. And then we ramp in and then we ramp out. I like how you can adjust the transition in and out. Very visual. You don't have to add any keyframes. It just feels like it works. And if you have audio in the clip and you play it back, it'll also speed it up, but also pitch it up. And if you don't want that high pitch or the slower sound, there is a preserve pitch function. So just speed it up without raising the pitch and making it sound like chipmunks. Or vice versa, if you try to slow down a shot, say we do 50%. No exceptions. Oh, but I can't be late. No exceptions. So if we just turn that off for this clip. Here for my first day of work. And you get the slow motion sound effect. So use it when you need it and just know that that option is there for you. And also if you don't want to have the speed transitions in and out, you can turn that off as well. And we'll just speed it up to 20 times and it'll just be a hard cut into the speed ramp. Again, this is all based on what footage you're working with and how you want the shot to present. So that's without it. But if you turn them on, it'll add them back in. So you can actually play and see which one works best for you. So I'm going to leave them in. And then, and just for this, I'm going to turn down the audio. So if you've done your speed ramp and you found that that's not the frame you want to end on, you can't just drag this over and, and choose another frame. You actually have to double click on it and then press edit, edit source frame. So you want a source frame and then you want to edit it. And then you, this icon pops up. And so now you can choose the out frame that you want. So you can choose a different frame and the same thing works. You double click on it, press edit, and then you choose the frame and just double click to get rid of that. So we started it sooner and then ended it later, but that looks weird. So I'm just going to bring it back. So that's speed ramp. And if you find that there's any point that you don't like the way it's going, you can just click the down arrow and send it back to normal, or you can change it. You can do a percentage or actually put in the duration that you need it to be if there's an exact time. So there's a lot of control, or you can just press the undo button and everything goes back. Or in this case, you can just go the down arrow and only for that section, it's going to go back to normal. So that's everything to do with speed ramping. Play around with the, the speed options menu and try the different things. The next one we're gonna deal with is the hold frame. Now there's two ways to do a hold frame or a freeze frame. If you wanted to do a freeze frame, it's option F and that creates a whole separate new clip. But this becomes a little bit troublesome if you have any kind of color effects or effects that are applied to the clip. Then you have to then apply it to this separate clip as well. So I don't like personally using this. It's good if you need to use it for a very specific thing and know that it's there. But a better way to do this is find the point that you want to hold and press Shift H. And the same kind of controls come up that you have for the speed ramping. But unlike speed ramping, there is no transition in or out. It just holds. But it's a great way to hold on a frame or bring up text if you need to bring up uh, features or information about something. And it's so easy to drag it out to the duration that you want. 
But if you did put an effect on it, it will translate to the entire clip, including the hold. So we have the raindrops on it, it holds, and the animation still works, and the effect is still working on that hold. And just change your duration. So instead of trying to build some kind of pre-comp, you're able to do it all within one clip. So I have the speed ramp, and it'll all happen with the effect on it, including the hold. So it's a really easy way to, to manipulate one clip and do multiple things to it. If you want to do, if you want to have another speed ramp, just select your select your range tool, and just speed it up. And do it again, and you can do that multiple times on one clip. And we're just going to bring it all back to normal. So now we are back with Shift N or the normal speed. And we're going to move the remove the two effects because those aren't needed. And you also have the rewind. which just does a speed rewind back to the beginning of that clip and then plays it again. There are multiple ways to adjust the timing of the clip. Um, those I don't use too often. I like to build those manually because I feel like there's more. I have more control with the speed ramping tools. And if you do slow down or speed ramp to slower footage, just make sure you change the video quality to optical flow. This will ensure that uh, Final Cut will try its best to make the footage not seem so choppy or jittery if you only shot at 24 frames a second and you didn't actually shoot in slow-mo. And all the tools and functions that I showed you in here are all in this drop-down menu. Uh, a lot of people forget that it's actually even there. Once you start using it, it's a fantastic little tool. So this is just the beginning of what the timeline in Final Cut Pro can do. Make sure you check out this video where I talk about all the cool things about the magnetic timeline and why I actually think it's one of the best. As always, thanks for watching.